Welcome back to my garage. In this video, we continue testing the PIP engine with the blower attached. We've had promising results so far. I'm not sure the ignition system is too happy though. This is Sunday night and I can't test engines Sunday nights for sound reasons. I went out there thinking I had to troubleshoot the retarder. I wasn't sure it was applying any force when we did the tests last time. The engine was revving like the retarder wasn't there at all. Listen when I apply some juice to the retarder. It certainly does work. It means there's a high probability the engine is actually that fierce. I took my girlfriend to Göteborg, Gothenburg, I think that's called in English, this weekend. And I want to thank Pierre and Olivia for the great company. And I want to say sorry if I got too drunk. Last part of the night there is mostly a haze. <laughs> so if I got overly excited and too much, I'm sorry. But had a great time. What I can remember at least. So thank you, Pierre and Olivia. And I'm sorry for ruining what probably was your date night. And I'm sorry for not remembering your name, Olivia. Sorry. And I had a great time. <laughs> with the large amount of fuel needed when you're running methanol and nitromethane, and especially with all the oil in the RC fuel I'm using, my ignition unit will need all the help it can get. So I've fully charged my LiPo now to 16.7 volts. Burning about 14.5 last time. I'm also gonna gap the plug. If the ignition unit still can't cope, we've always got this coil to try. Thank you, Hollandaren. This one has even more grunt than the one I'm currently using. Even though that one has flames and stuff. America! Current plug gap is a hair under 0.6 millimeters. Let's bring that down to about 0.3. About 0.3, a hair over. A smaller plug gap reduces the voltage needed for a spark to jump between the electrodes. Not only does that make it easier for the ignition unit to create the spark under less than ideal circumstances with all that fuel in there and the high pressure, the lower voltage also creates less interference on the computer controlling the dyno and the ignition unit itself and everything. The downside is the smaller spark, but unless you can create a spark big enough to set off multiple turbulent eddies at once inside a combustion chamber, probably won't make a difference small or big unless it's really big like four spark plugs big you might remember my four spark plug head idea though and that's worth testing would be a poor man's hcci i said poor man's hcci it's not hcci you might remember my cheap timing light failing me last time I've had a look at it and I can't find anything wrong. This is the battery I brought back to life after taking it down to zero volts. It's actually kind of swollen. Probably not the safest thing to use. I hooked the timing light up to my bench power supply. I got it hooked up to my spark plug here. And I'll show you what happens when I do a test fire of the plug. I hit test ignition one. And as you can see, it works. Nice. Now we can check timing and adjust it to spec. I have a suspicion the ignition unit will have trouble firing when we enter the power band. I have this thing to monitor voltage and current and see how the spark behaves. If we encounter issues. You know the drill by now. We're waiting for the water to heat up for preheating the engine. And first we're gonna confirm timing and uh, adjust if needed. Then hopefully some proper testing and some numbers. It's warmed up enough to check the timing and uh, do the adjustments if needed. Gotta remember the exhaust extraction. That's not on. <laughs> Stupid. Probably hydro locked now. <laughs>
Yesterday, my longtime partner NordVPN came to the rescue again. You see, my girlfriend, she has this all time favorite movie, The Crow. She actually has a tattoo with the sign from The Crow. It is not available in Norway on any of the streaming services. But I did a quick Google search and it's available in the UK. I'll show you. I'm logged in from Norway now and I'll search for The Crow. And it's not here. The Crown. The, cr the IT crowd. That's not it. NordVPN, quickly connect to the United Kingdom. Reload Netflix. Bam. There it is. The crowd. Awesome. If you want to watch stuff that's not available where you live or where you're traveling to. If you want to book stuff that's not available where you live or where you're traveling to. If you want to book stuff like flights cheaper than in your expensive country. NordVPN can make you appear to be from wherever in the world. There's like 5,000 servers to choose from all over the world. As a pretty huge bonus, they also keep you secure by having all your data travel in an encrypted tunnel. No one can spy on you and steal your passwords or credit card information and stuff like that. Which is important. NordVPN now offers the Nord Security Bundle and there's several packs to choose from. Standard, which is NordVPN only, plus, that's NordVPN, plus NordPass. Complete, that's NordVPN, NordPass and NordLocker. And you'll get a 4 month bonus on all packs and products. A nice promotion is waiting for you at nordvpn.com slash stuffing. There's a link in the description. Thank you NordVPN. It doesn't want to work for some strange reason. Guess we'll have to jump straight to testing them. Let's hope the ignition timing isn't set at something that will destroy the engine and the load. I don't think it is. It should be set to what I set it to. You never know. Definitely having a hard time on set of power delivery. And I think the ignition is struggling also. So let's see if this can give us any clues to what's happening.
I turned off the extraction, there's still a lot of fog in here. I'm gonna leave and start editing soon and try to decipher some of these numbers and stuff. Lots of oscillations on the dyno. I tried to reduce my uh, PID numbers, but uh, it didn't help much. Need to play around a little more with them. The problem is a typical two-stroke problem. There's zero power up until a point, and then there's lots of power. The dyno is having a hard time coping with the changes. This is results versus time versus RPM. It's really hard to decipher what's going on. But you can see here in some of the runs, we're actually up there touching on almost 30 horsepower. I'm not sure how valid these numbers are though. Might be much easier testing this engine in inertia mode. Would be cool putting it in a frame and testing it on the old dyno. I'll be back after hopefully gaining some knowledge about what's going on. I'm in the middle of editing and I've had a closer look at the footage and it really seems like it's the ignition that's struggling. The ignition mate didn't show it cutting out, but both voltage and current was pretty much pegged to the roof. Which means it's having a really hard time igniting the mixture under that pressure and with all that fluid fuel around. I think this more powerful coil is worth a shot. It could also help if we advanced or retarded the ignition. I'm not quite sure where the ignition is sitting right now, because my lamp's not working. It's only Monday! We have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday for uh, testing. I'm gonna quickly edit this and get it out there. And then continue. See you next time. <laughs>